Hold on to your Hermes scarves, guys. From Versace dreams to Walmart chic, get ready to have your designer delusions shattered. It's time to separate the Gucci from the faux Gucci and discover who's really calling the shots in the style stakes. Contrary to popular belief, the rich aren't always dripping in designer labels. In fact, they're more likely to rock a plain white tee than a Versace patterned shirt. Let me spill some style secrets from the genuinely affluent. They've got this knack for embracing everyday luxury. It's all about those little details, like the cozy feel of a cashmere sweater or the impeccable cut of a tailored suit. True elegance? It's all about keeping it understated, prioritizing quality over quantity and sophistication over flashy displays. You see real luxury? It's often hidden in plain sight, especially to those who aren't in the know, my friend. You know those debates about old money versus new money? They're all about different styles. Old money, like Jackie Kennedy's, is all about subtlety and sophistication, not needing to show off. On the other hand, the new money look is much less subtle. It's like saying, look at me, I made it. And of course, social media just amplifies everything. But let's be real. The flashier look tends to steal the show. Take Mark Zuckerberg, for example. Looking at him, you might think he's all about snagging budget-friendly clothes from Costco, right? Nope. His collection of plain gray tees are actually custom-made masterpieces. These suits don't bear any visible logos, showcasing subtle luxury over flashy branding. Warren Buffett, known for his frugality despite being incredibly wealthy, has 20 suits tailored for him by his friend Madam Lee, the brains behind Dalian Dayong Trans, a top-notch clothing manufacturer in China. But what about the celebrities, you ask? Aren't they the epitome of luxury? Well, yes and no. While some may be dripping in diamonds and designer duds, others are embracing a more low-key approach to fame. When you're scrolling through Instagram, double-tapping on celebs rocking their designer or watching a movie with designer clothes in it, here's the scoop. Those A-listers might just be getting paid to play dress-up. Yep, that's right. While they're out there flaunting their Gucci belts and Versace robes, some of the real VIPs of the fashion world are playing it cool with a wardrobe that screams minimalism, quality, and fit. Sometimes even the same brand have different lines for logo addicts and for the ones seeking quality. Can you guess which of these dresses is from Dior? Is it the one covered in the Dior logo or is it the other one? Actually, both dresses are from Dior. But here's the catch. They're targeted at different customers. Take a good look at the one without the logo. It's the kind of dress you could easily picture Meghan Markle wearing. But would you ever see her in the flashy logo-covered dress? That's the real question. Of course, there are indeed many wealthy individuals who do buy branded items. However, in general, they tend to prioritize what they personally like and what fits well, rather than simply opting for items with the largest logos. But here's the twist. Due to their steep price tags, one might assume that luxury brands are primarily consumed by the wealthy elite. It seems logical, doesn't it? After all, they're the ones with the financial means to comfortably afford such items. However, the reality is quite different. Lower and middle class consumers actually make up nearly half of the global luxury goods market, as you can see in this study. It's quite surprising when you consider the economic contrast between these consumers and billionaires. The fact that individuals from varying economic backgrounds contribute significantly to the luxury market challenges, conventional assumptions about who indulges in such high-end purchases, a significant portion of designer brands directly target middle-class dreamers yearning for a taste of opulence, as well as newly wealthy individuals striving to flaunt their riches, particularly through their most striking clothes and extravagant jewelry. Designer brand name are made for the rich, but are sold mostly to the people that wants to look rich. Even The Simpsons, our beloved cartoon about the quintessential middle-class family, had a collaboration with Balenciaga. I know she's always wanted something of yours, so can you send me the cheapest thing with your label on it, a scarf? A piece of cloth with a press tag, even just a tag. Fashion brands are all about wealth, but serve as an aspirational pursuit, advertising to middle-class people who dream of looking rich. The luxury goods market, while encompassing lower and middle-class consumers, does not necessarily reflect economic status accurately, 
As highlighted in a study showing the shockingly disparate impact on different socioeconomic groups, from Rolex watches to Lamborghini sports cars, these items scream, look at me, louder than a peacock at a mating dance. They're experts at making you feel like a million bucks. But here's the catch. When you're driving a Lambo, all eyes are on the car, not the driver. So, most wealthy people acquire things they genuinely enjoy and need, rather than simply to impress others. You know those branded Barack slippers from Versace? They're not even the gold standard of quality. They're just made of regular cotton. Nope, they're simply excellent at making you feel like the king or queen of the jungle. It's similar to how male peacocks flaunt their colorful feathers to impress potential mates. And us humans. Well, we've got our own version of peacock feathers, luxury goods. We splurge on flashy stuff to make a statement, to show the world that we're worth it. But let's be real. It's all just a fancy way of saying, hey, look at me, I'm doing well. And speaking of feeling like a million bucks, ever wonder why your coworker can afford to show up in head-to-toe designer gear? Well, here's a spoiler alert. They might not be as financially savvy as they seem. In fact, they could be drowning in debt faster than you can say credit card statement, all just to project a certain status. The more extreme income inequality becomes, the more pressure people feel to create the impression that they are succeeding. But hey, who can blame them? In a world where social status is everything, it's no wonder people are willing to shell out big bucks to keep up appearances. And let's not forget about the counterfeit craze, where knockoff Gucci bags flood the market faster than you can say, fake it till you make it. LVMH, also known as Moet Hennessy Louis Vuitton, is the French powerhouse behind iconic brands like Tiffany and Dior. In recent years, LVMH didn't just grow, it skyrocketed. Their market value shot up to over half a trillion dollars, making them a force to be reckoned with. And guess who's leading the charge? None other than Bernard Arnault, the big cheese at LVMH, who's now sitting pretty as the richest person on the planet, with a mind-boggling net worth of over $200 billion. And since the heart of this channel is finance, here's a fun thought. If you'd invested 10 grand in LVMH stocks back in 2011, instead of splurging on Louis Vuitton goodies, you'd be rolling in dough right now, with over 100 grand in your pocket. Think about a fashionable investment, Enjoying exploring the financial side of life? Subscribe into this channel for wickedly savvy investment tips and mind-blowing money hacks. Just to clarify, there's absolutely no shame in setting aside some cash to snag that fancy brand name item you've been eyeing. But hey, remember, it might not always carry the weight we give it. Sure, it's fun to treat yourself now and then, but don't let a logo define your worth. At the end of the day, it's just stuff, right? So, if it brings you joy, go for it, but always keep things in perspective. Keep in mind that, based on what we've seen so far, owning a Chanel bag or a Louis Vuitton wallet has nothing to do with being rich or poor. It could be an impulse purchase, a gift, a result of credit card debt, or even a knockoff. These factors are not necessarily mutually exclusive. So don't judge a person's financial status solely based on the brands they own. So next time you see someone flaunting a Louis Vuitton suitcase, refrain from making assumptions about their economic status. Brands can be appealing if you genuinely appreciate the product, but remember, it's not about the label, it's about the confidence you exude. Consume wisely and avoid consumer's debt at all costs. Just remember, it's not about the label, it's about the swagger. Don't miss out on our upcoming discussions about wealth, money, and all things finance. Hit that subscribe button now and join the party. Your financial goals are just a few savvy moves away, and we've got the best tips for our subscribers. Until next time, take care and keep shining.